Hello, I'm Mike and welcome to 33 Mile Garage. You may be wondering why I'm pushing a 1964 Ford Falcon. Maybe because it doesn't run? No, because it doesn't have an engine. But that doesn't matter right now. What's important is... All right, here's the deal. This thing got hit a while back. Uh, pushed this bumper in about three inches. Got a nice kink in it here. It also took the core support back. You can see it's almost an inch back from the fender that was replaced. So uh, this whole core support is supposed to be forward at least an inch. This bumper needs to come forward about probably three inches or so. But I want to get this all straightened around. I'm going to do an engine swap on the car, but before I start cutting the shock towers out and I got to replace some uh, sections of the floor, before I do that, I want to make sure the front end's all straight before that happens. Here's the genius plan. Tie this to the tree and there's tie down supports underneath the car right there. So I just tied into those two tie down points, wrap that around the tree to hold it back, and there it goes. Kate going to work. And I got this thing tied up to the back of the truck on the trailer hitch and to the front bumper to hopefully pull this thing down and out. So what I did is mark where the bumper is currently here with this black line. I measured from the other side, the other side that should be good is all the way up here just past the body line. So the top of this should be the top of that mark and the back of the bumper should be right at the back of this line. So that's gotta go about two and a half inches and about an inch and a half up. So that's the plan. check and see where we're at so as far as the bumper pulling out is going really good I almost got it to line it's gonna spring way back but I can still pull forward but I'm still an inch low so I'm gonna have to come up and my plan to come up with it is I've got this pump cart yeah go ahead I know it's a little hack butchered but you know sometimes you just kind of got to do what you got to do and hopefully I'm gonna hit the bottom side of that fender Let's see what happens here. Oh yeah. yeah. So I'm actually, I am really close to having it in the right spot right now. But it's going to spring back. So I'm going to have to overdo this a little bit. My plan is to come about a half inch high and a half inch out and it should spring right back to where I want it. And let's see what happens here. And I think I'm going to have to grab a hammer. Uh, board and beat that down a little bit to hold it. One more forward. So now I got it pretty far forward and a little bit high. I'm going to come up just a little bit more. See if I can. That looks pretty good, but I have a feeling it's going to spring back. And I do have to pull down on the bottom quite a bit more too. So I'm going to reset up my pulling mechanism give this one more go and let the slack off it and see what happens all right that was the last pull from underneath uh bumper's kind of straightened out still got a little divot here but i'm going to replace the bumper that's all right with me but the good thing is is all the brackets and stuff are straightened out because i basically got this thing lined up pretty much right where i wanted it in this direction and the height is just a touch low it might be a quarter inch low but i can adjust that in the brackets now so but at least I got all the brackets straightened around. The last thing I do is I'm going to have to pull this fender off and pull this core support out because the core support still kinked in pretty far. But I think I can grab that from the outside and pull that out and get it made it up with the fender the correct way. All right, got the fender in place. It looks a lot better because we are hitting here, but we are hitting up here now. You can see we're about a quarter inch, quarter inch away down there. So when I pulled on this section here, I pulled out too far because the fender is pretty much we got these huge gaps right now so i'm gonna have to go in about a half inch at least on there try to get that fender to line up better just bang this section in about a half inch i'm gonna bring this down to that's gonna be too high right now and that should do it 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take the front end off. I got a little bit of help right now. Kate's here, so she's gonna help me pull the hood off and then I'll get the bumper and stuff off. All right. Okay. Yep. Now, we can tilt it down and then hold it up. I'm just pop these guys on. All right. Next up, front bumper. And hopefully these bolts aren't stripped. A lot of times they get stripped inside this frame rail and they don't want to come out. They just get rusty. Uh, probably just like that. I have to cut this one off, which will, which will suck. What happens with this one? Nothing free. That's a good thing. At least that one came off. We'll see what happens on the other side. But, yeah, he cutting these things off. But that's what happens when you work on rusty cars, I guess. Yeah, somebody's had this apart once before because there's all kinds of stupid washers on there. Should be on there. I don't mind cutting it off, but I just don't like cutting. I got plenty to do. So whatever I can get out without cutting now would be great. Now the problem is, as soon as this bump comes out, the bumper's gonna fall on my head. So now I'm gonna have to fold with one knee the bumper up. I got the other bolt ground out. Pretty much sucked. And I just got this one. So that's it for the bumper. Typically you'd have three bolts through here, but this one only had two bolts in it. Must have been taken off before. Is it bumper removed? Driver side fender's coming off. Six bolts across the top, three down in the front. I already got the one down here that straps off, and then we got two hidden ones. This dude right here behind the door. Woohoo! And the problem right down underneath here. These are always a problem because they're always rusted. That guy right there. So, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to cut him off. That's look at Joy right there, if anybody was wondering. All right, all right, takes care of that. I hate doing it, but... And the worst problem is, now I gotta go and uh, put another walnut behind there later. Which sucks. So here's something that kind of stinks about these, especially these three bolts here. What happens is you gotta get a half inch wrench snaked up behind here, all the way up there, and then back the That way, because they're not J nuts or anything, they're just regular nuts. So it kinda stinks a little bit. Makes it a pain to get these things out of here. So do have to fish wrench all the way up in there and I can tell you that I got short T-Rex arms. It's hard for me to get reach all the way up. These are our last six to come out. Some can be more of a challenge than others. Uh, boy this is a combination of Hacking this man. Some of these are just <laughs> bolts. Who knows? This thing's been apart so many times. Everybody's using whatever kind of bolts. Something different on every one of them. You never know what you're going to run into. That's a J-clip that spun off. I gotta go back and fix it. So, we got one left. With a spinning J nut underneath. Alright, that was one minute and 30 seconds of pure joy. So, if I got all the bolts, the spinner should just pop right off with no problem now. 
that fender looks pretty good inside. Except for maybe that mouse. A little house in there. Other than that, that fender looks pretty good. All right, everything else on this one except the two bolts. Actually, I don't have everything out. I just don't have everything in, so there's only two bolts holding it on. The two bolts and this fender will pop off. No problem. There we go. And that one's done and gone. Hmm. That one also looks pretty good inside. No mouse house though. Yeah. So one of the last things I want to do today is I want to get these tops of the shock towers off. Uh, the back two bolts came out, but of course. And these guys are spinning. I try to pry up on them. So back to cutting them off again because I I can't tell you how many freaking bolts I've cut off today. But while well, I'm in the middle of it, might as well cut that one. And I'm just going to cut that one off too because I'm sure that one's going to be the same. Shocks are kept cut off. There we go. Pull these dudes out. Pull these guys out of here. So now I got most of the front and the part. Now I can start to evaluate what I need to start fixing here. But it looks like the front end, the aprons and stuff, all this is in really good shape. The front stuff is really good until you get into the doors. And just past the doors here, this is where stuff starts really going bad. So this is where the problems are. The floors are pretty much shot. So I did buy for tow boards for the left and right side I can fix that and I did get a floor section for the front to fix the other part of the hole uh, the one thing I am gonna have to do though is down there there's a reinforcement that looks like it goes from that frame rail to the rocker so I'm gonna have to make that myself I'm gonna have to get another piece of metal and do that so I'm gonna end it here. I'm gonna run up the store, buy some material. My goal today was to get everything taken apart and I did accomplish that. Uh, I, now tomorrow, my plan is to get to bed early tonight, wake up very early tomorrow. I wanna be out here, I'll wake up around 5.30, get out here by six in the morning and start working on the floors. Tonight I gotta go get some more stock material so I can build up some reinforcements that I didn't have material for yet and do that. So. I'll end it today and I will see you on the next video at 6 a.m.